The first time that you log into Windows 11, you generally want to do a little bit of cleanup and personalization so that things are going to work the way that you would prefer them. So this is essentially on many systems, the default appearance that you're going to have, you know, some kind of background. This is a common one. And, you know, this or a very similar set of icons on your taskbar, uh, etc. Right. So I'll show you what I do. Of course, uh, you can vary that and, you know, ignore half of it or add to it, etc. But this is what I tend to do. First thing I like to modify is the taskbar. I don't use all of these icons here and you know, I don't like search taking up so much space here. You can actually search by just clicking on start and searching in the bar up there. So I right click on the taskbar and go to taskbar settings and then search box, you can just say hide and that takes that away. And I don't tend to use the task view button. I turn that off. This is the widget down here. I don't tend to like that there either. So I turn that off. I don't use Microsoft chat. So I turn that off. So immediately I've cleaned up a lot of things that are just going to be visual clutter if I had left them on there. Now you may also like to go down here to taskbar behaviors and we can put the start button to the left where if you come from earlier versions of Windows, you're probably used to having it, right? And also where it says here, combine taskbar buttons and hide labels. I tend not to like the icons to combine, which means if you say open uh, five instances of Firefox, they'll, all, in, all those instances will be stacked very tightly together and it will be very hard to tell you know which one is which when you hover over it it does show you a thumbnail but i like things to be more obvious so what i do is i say uh when taskbar is full here and then you'll notice that i get a little label here that wasn't there before so i can see more of what's happening so if you're you know say in microsoft word you'll actually actually see part of the document name and if you have several instances of Word, instead of having them tightly stacked and not being able to immediately tell which document is which, you'll see a little preview of the document name and you can easily click, click, click and switch between the documents, right? So that's why I do that. So let's close off this window. I don't use the Microsoft, Microsoft Store very often, so I right click on that and unpin it from the taskbar. But Edge and you know, the file explorer are obviously commonly used. So let's just pop into the file explorer and I'll show you a few things here. We'll maximize it. Now, one thing I like to do is I tend to like the details view for things, right? So say if we're in uh, downloads here, there's no files because this is a new account, of course, but you get all of these options in terms of, you know, extra large, large icons, medium icons. Details gives you, you know, the name, the date, the type, the size, and other information depending on, you know, what type of file is in your uh, folder. For example, if we go into Drive C here, we see, uh, you know, the date modified, and these are all folder types. If we pop into the Windows folder, we see information about each of the files there. And you can right click, <laughs> my, my poor lonely cat, eh? We can right click and say, size all columns to fit. And you get a, a better readable bit here. But, you know, that's a little bit of an overview there. What I like to do is click on these three little dots here and go to options. And then I don't tend to like all the recently used files to be showing up. I like to, you know, jump where I know my files are. So I tend to clear this uh, history, right? And then uncheck those bits there, right? I go to view and I uncheck hide extensions for known file types because I do like to see if I'm looking at an image, is it a JPEG or a GIF or a ping or whatever? And then I go down to the bottom here and I like to click on show all folders and also expand to open folder. 
so that when you're in a folder, it will actually expand to that folder on the left hand side. Now, the split here, if you hover in just the right place, you'll get this little double arrow and you can pull that over to the side. And so we'll see that, uh, say if I go to CBS temp here, it'll expand to that folder on the left. And then, you know, you can, you can drag files from there to related nearby folders. Otherwise you're gonna have to keep expanding each section trying to find where everything is on your system if you want to move things around or even uh, just see what's nearby in another folder. So that is what I do in the file explorer. Now the first time that you run Edge, it's going to bombard you with questions. All right? So um, I'm going to assume that you, like me, uh, you know, like your privacy. And I guess I'm just showing you what I do anyway. So I say start without your data here, right? And then, you know, again, they're asking, do you want to save things? Or I say don't allow, confirm and continue, you know, warning, warnings, blah, blah, blah. Continue without this data, right? Don't allow, confirm and start browsing. And then they want to know, well, what style do you want? So I tend to be happy with the default, so I just say finish, right? And then finally, we can, you know, go online and click on something and do something. Uh, but also, on the right-hand side, there is this bar here that I tend not to use. I don't really want it there. It takes up space. It's distracting. So I click on the little gear icon here for the sidebar settings. I click on go to all sidebar settings. And then I don't want apps in there to show me notifications or offer me anything. So I turn that bit off, All right? And then I turn this bit off because I don't need to personalize it. And I turn this off because I don't need to see it at all, All right? And then I can close that tab. And if we close this tab, the whole thing will close. If we go back in, then we have a cleaner looking browser. We've answered all the nasty questions and we can get online, right? So the other thing is that we have, uh, you know, if I notice here, this little symbol here with the orange dot, it, it's telling me that there's some updates, right? So the first time you, that you jump into your account, you're gonna almost certainly have updates to run. So if we right click on the start button and we go to settings, we can expand maximize that go to windows update at the bottom on the left All right and it will show you a list of updates that are either running as you look at it or that have gone through far enough that the system now wants to restart so that's where we are here this update has come in but to finalize it it wants to restart the computer this one here it's being offered, but uh, we'd ha actually have to click download and install to get that one to come in. So what I would do is I would click restart now, restart the computer, then go back in, right click, click on settings, go to Windows Update, click on download and install, let that new update run. When it says restart the computer, I would restart again and just keep going in. You might have to go in three, four, five times, check for updates, get whatever updates there are until finally when you check for updates and it says there are none, you know that you're completely up to date. Just as a warning, sometimes when you go in after an update, it'll tell you, congratulations, you're all, all up to date. But if you cl click on check for updates, it'll find new ones. So that notification isn't always true unless you're the one that has just clicked on check for updates and it tells you after that that you're good and everything is updated, All right? So uh, that is an overview of the first steps. Hopefully you found that helpful.